So my last video was about how happy I've been with the BX for the last 10, 11 years and that you don't really need a bigger tractor. Well, this video is about me buying a bigger tractor. So what do we have here? We have a just a couple year old, but only 90 hours on it, a Kubota B2650. And this is the bigger chassis of the B series. There's two different chassis you can get in them. This is the larger of the two. Got a backhoe on the back of it, which I'm excited to have. It's got the 534 loader on the front. And the real reason I got this one is it has a factory cab with air conditioning. Sucked me sideways. Uh, and obviously heat. Front rear wipers, defrost, it, it's, it's a nice place to be in the front. And it also has a snowblower for the front. So we've got a few mods that we have to do to this thing, um, but I do wanna explain why I upgraded. And it's not that there's anything wrong with the BX, it's a great machine, but the older I get, the more important time becomes. So I found that I can do anything that a big tractor can do. Literally, I mean, short of the obvious, like pulling big stumps, although you can still pull big stumps with it too. It just takes more time. So whether that's blowing snow, uh, regrading, uh, name it, the BX can do just about everything as long as you have the time to spend to invest in it because it is a very capable machine. However, time is money and time is important. So I decided to take the opportunity to upgrade to the B series because I wanted the air conditioning and I wanted to gain back some time. I've also beat the ever living snot out of my Kubota BX. Uh, it's almost 800 hours on that. And I bought that tractor brand new, one owner, 800 hard hours. Nothing's gone wrong with it, knock on wood, yet. But you know, we're getting up to a thousand hours on a small machine like that, that's, that's getting up there. Uh, bigger the machine, more hours they seem to handle without really any major problems. But those small machines, you, you gotta be, you know, gotta be careful. So for tractor mods, first thing we did, uh, upgraded the halogen lighting to LEDs, upgraded these guys to LEDs, upgraded all the marker lights to LEDs as well. You may notice this cab is missing something that you would expect to find, which is the seat. So I've got the seat pulled out of it right now because I am upgrading the audio system. And I found a subwoofer that I think is gonna fit under the bracket that supports the seat, which is friggin' awesome. So I'm gonna link this guy in the description. This is a six by nine or six by 10 uh, subwoofer from Rockville and it has the amp built right in. Tiny form factor. I had to remove the grill that normally is a metal grill that covers this, but it adds about a quarter of an inch and I don't have a quarter of an inch in height. It's gonna fit just perfectly under the seat with any luck here. Cab speakers I currently have out. Uh, those will be getting delivered tomorrow. So they're just a four inch that goes up there. So you can use just about any four inch um, as long as it doesn't have a grill on it. The ones with a grill that are round may hit the ceiling. So you wanna get the ones without the grill and then use the factory or reuse the factory grills that come on the tractor. So forgive the glare, you're going through the back window, but I did upgrade the head unit with a Sony with a little bit more power. And then I also wired in a switch that I use on my old tractor, I did the same thing. You hit that switch and it turns on the radio only so that when you are, I don't know, working around the machine, you wanna leave the radio going, but you don't wanna leave the key on with the fuel solenoid open because there's really no accessory position for a tractor. It's just, you know, you're on or you're off. Uh, this little button just overrides and sends 12 volts to the trigger on the radio. And uh, I think it actually looks pretty nice in there too. So this is the factory seat and it actually is a suspension seat, like a big boy tractor, which is nice. And that really makes a huge difference when you're riding over rough terrain. But my goal is, is that we're gonna slide that subwoofer right under this cutout here and it just will barely fit in there. But if it fits in there, we're essentially losing zero space inside the cab. And obviously it's gonna give me uh, quite the butt massage when it's bumping, which will be nice. Since space is super, super tight, we're not gonna be able to utilize the mounts, the little brackets that they give you for this. And that's actually okay, but we're gonna use some double-sided tape here. I mean, gravity's gonna, th this thing weighs about 10 pounds, so gravity's gonna do a, a good job of keeping this tape well pressed into the metal prep the metal really well. And the other advantage to this is I eliminate vibrations between the base plate and the metal plate. 
that we're mounting it into, which is about 3 16 thick, so that's good and rigid. It shouldn't cause any vibrations there either. Yep, that's pretty freaking hilarious. Oh my God, that is too funny. Well, I would say that is a serious success. All right, so now we're just gonna wrap all our wires up, make those look pretty in factory. Uh, I'm gonna clean the seat while I have it out and uh, then we'll get that reinstalled. I would challenge you to find a subwoofer in this cab. It fit in there like it was made to. I don't even know if I can get in there low enough to have you see. Oh yeah, there you go. You can see you're hiding back there. Like if that doesn't, if that's not made almost perfectly for this cab, I don't know what is. In a completely useless area, or well, I mean, I guess you could tuck some magazines in there or something, but it's not an area under the seat that you would really do much with. Except put a subwoofer in it. There's plenty of storage behind the seat anyway. There's a storage tray and some other spaces. So uh, plenty of usable space. That thing takes up nothing and it slams. It sounds so good in that little cab. It doesn't take much. Can't wait to uh, get these speakers in. Those will be showing up here tomorrow. So we'll replace those guys. And uh, yeah, awesome. It actually dims the headlights. So that's good. This is definitely just Coke. So while I was playing around in the garage, got delivery. Got some MB quartz. These are probably one of the best deals on car speakers right now. MB quartz been around a while. They make some really nice stuff they always have. And you can get these things pretty cheap. So for comparison purposes, or porpoises, be quite an upgrade here. So this has most certainly been a pain in the ass, but I took a universal shift knob off of Amazon, and with Dremel I went in and I've carved out the center and I drilled a hole down right parallel with the mount itself. And that hole is to hold this switch. I also took the original top, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, six speed shifter and uh, dremeled that down to fit as a trim ring around the switch. And this guy's gonna drop right in on top and give me a real factory looking control for the uh, deflector on the snow blower, which it has a hydraulic left and right, but it's a manual up and down and uh, we don't do manual around here. So I uh, cut the switch down just to save myself a little bit of space here, and now we're ready to wire it up. So to wire a reversing switch for something like one of these guys, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, this is a linear actuator, that's what's gonna go up and down. So we're gonna take a momentary dual pole, double pole, double throw switch, which is what this is called. Um, and you can get these in a variety of configurations and sizes. But really what it is, is it's basically four switches in one. So when you flick it up, it closes these two contacts and these two contacts, but they're separate. And when you flick it down, these two contacts and these two contacts, and they're separate. So we're gonna attach the motor to these two contacts. We're then gonna attach the positive and the negative, and then the positive and the negative, so flip-flop from this side. So what happens is when you close that switch, it will connect either the opposing positive and negatives and send positive and negative this way or this way, depending upon which way you flip it. And it's really just that simple.
I took my linear actuator and uh, wired it up in a way that makes it a quick disconnect for where it attaches to the tractor right with the other quick disconnect. So that'll be nice and easy. Now we're just going to kind of figure out some geometry here around the chute opening to position things where it works best to get the full range out of the um, linear actuator. And you want that not just because it's more progressive, but it will auto stop at the end. So in case your thumb gets hung up on a button or whatever, there's a limit switch in here that will shut off and prevent you from burning the motor out. So I want to get full range out of it. And I also want to align that with the full range that the deflector is capable of doing. So we're going to start figuring that out now. I was going to mount it on this side. That's how the other ones do it. But my old blower, I mounted it on the side and it worked perfect. So why mess with a good thing? All right, I lied. I moved it over here for wire management. We're gonna put it on this side. It just makes things a little bit cleaner. You can see the uh, connector I have pre-wired here. I'm gonna go ahead and extend it all the way out here. And get that top measurement. Oh, man down. Got it all the way at the top of its travel. through this way to minimize any hang-ups on the inside because any little thing snow can catch. So we got some nice round-headed Phillips which is fine for this um, but it won't protrude much and some nylon lock washers because you're gonna want to snug these but not make them tight because it's gonna be able to pivot. Up all the way and I'm just gonna make a little mark I think it needs to be. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. go. You have to keep in mind that this whole thing has to turn quite a bit so I'm actually going to aim the cable towards the middle of this chute so that way I know I got enough room to go. Cable clamp here.
Yep, this is happening. <laughs> Seed heat in a tractor. I know. I am ridiculous. Get over it. So, we gotta have that nice. It's kind of hard not to just want to dress it up a little bit. So I picked up this seat heat, universal seat heat kit, and we are going to install at least one of these pads into uh, the backrest. I'm not a huge fan of the butt heat, you know, the, the bottom pad, uh, but I do definitely like the uh, back heat, the lower back heat. I've had three back surgeries, so. That's kind of my jam. Uh, so we are gonna get this guy installed in the backrest of the Kubota B-Series. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna link in the description the uh, direct link to buy this. But this is a pretty basic kit. They make all kinds of fancy ones that are real pretty and nice. Uh, I don't really care, I just need it to work. Um, so this seat, this seat heat kit just basically has a high, a low, and an off switch, and that's done through a relay. So we're going to tap into the existing factory accessory that I've already tapped into for the amplifier, and we're going to see if it can handle the load of this as well. It probably will. Uh, if it doesn't, not a big deal to run a new cable up there. But believe it or not, these seat heaters don't require a ton of current to operate. They're pretty low current devices. Um, and it's amazing how much heat you can get out of it, even at 12 volts. Uh, so we're going to set that up using that just because it's way easier uh, than uh, running a new cable from the battery on back. And we'll see how that goes. So to remove the inside part of the seat, really easy. It's just Velcro across the front here. And that literally pulls right out. Now yours will have a, a, a little connection here for a pressure switch to indicate whether it's an operator in the seat or not. I have already gone ahead and removed that pressure switch because they're just a pain. Uh, again, safety-wise, smarter movers to leave it in there, uh, but me and safety have never got along real well, so that's already removed. But just know you'll have to pull that little uh, connector apart to remove this section, and uh, that's the part we care about. So no sense, probably gonna go this way, uh, right down to the back, up to the lower back. Yeah, that works. On the back here, we're gonna pull these staples out. I've actually already had this seat off, at least the bottom portion of it, and I've carved out the centerpiece here, and this just helps take some weight off your spine, uh, it's better for my back. I do this, I carve out every seat on everything I own from motorcycles to tractors to even cars. Uh, it really just helps with my jacked up back to uh, take some load off of there. So yours will not have that, mine does. And this pad is gonna fit in there very nicely. So we're gonna lay that in just like so. Uh, these come with double-sided sticky tape on them. This is also a good time, or good time if you want to change your center of your seat out with some alligator skin or leopard made from genuine real leopard or unicorn farts. You can uh, obviously change that center section out and customize it. Uh, I'm not gonna be taking advantage of that opportunity at the moment, uh, but you know, thought I'd mention it. So we'll peel off the double-sided tape here and we're gonna route our power connection towards the bottom since that's where it's going to end up eventually anyway. So you're going to go down this way. I'm going to want you up there right across the top. Uh, I may want to carve that out a little bit, but that'll be fine. And then we'll route the wire down this way. I'm going to probably take a little bit of foam out of here. Just because I don't want to feel the wire at all. So we'll just carve out a section. Give that wire a place to tuck in nicely. Pull the factory cover right back over the top of it. Money! Just 
going to bend this up a little bit nicer. And have a staple on it. So before we go any further, I am going to hook this up to a 12 volt supply. Just make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. So that we don't put a ton of work into something that doesn't work. So on low, believe it or not, this little guy only draws four tenths of an amp. Uh, a little high on the voltage. Let me bring that down. That'll change the amperage draw a little bit. Uh, let's go to 12, 13. Yeah, that's good. One tenth of an amp. How is that even possible? I will right, we'll bump it up to roast your marshmallows. One point. 1.5 amps at 13 volts. That is nothing. So that really does not require anything serious from a circuitry perspective. And uh, we're going to give this thing a couple of minutes to get warmed up here and see how it does. Now granted that again that is just one pad on there. I have the second one. If I were to add that we're going to just about double the, uh, double the load here. Now that it's all heated up, uh, obviously resistance increases with heat, so it's drawing 1.71 amps, which is still nothing at 12 volts, and she's heating up really nicely. That's going to feel very nice on the back. All right, on off switch, I think we're going to run. I want it somewhere easily accessible and very visible. Uh, so maybe up here, no. Let's go right there. Yeah, we'll put it right about here. So I'm attaching the wiring to this uh, PTO engagement lever, which will be fine. Um, and then uh, we're gonna tuck the bulk of it up and under the seat here. And the power wire we will send towards the back. Let me uh, click that guy forward. Yeah, that works. That works nice, actually. Oh, watch out for the camera. Oh. So yeah, you saw the uh, the seat heat switch in there. But we'll turn that on. Give it a second for the relays to click. And we've got high and low. Pretty nice. And then the um, volume control for that subwoofer I put right here too, so I can adjust that on the fly. So like I said, she is uh, ready to rip. Man, that is one good looking and comfortable machine. So I've got it all set up now for winter. I took the backhoe off and uh, got the three point hitch set up on there along with a new blade. My old one I sold with the old tractor with my BX because it had uh, pretty much been bent into a pretzel anyway. Uh, blower is all set, greased, cleaned up, buffed up, ready to rock and roll. Uh, on the inside of this thing, it is just a little bit of heaven on tractor earth between the new stereo system that's in there, the subwoofer, push button up and down on the blower, heated seats, and I also set it up on a Norco charger with a little permanent port built right into the side there. So this thing is like, I can't wait. I just can't wait. I can't wait for the first really good snow because uh, this is a lot more machine than I'm used to running uh, with a lot more blower and a lot more weight and a lot more comfort. While I am recording this, I do have a few other updates. Boats winterized, I got a new Jeep, motorcycles winterized, and there's a camera aimed at Project Shake and Bake. So yeah, she's getting some love here too. Uh, did a little work on that today. That uh, rack and pinion upgrade for this girl. And uh, you know, someday, assuming we still have fossil fuel left, this thing will go down the track. But uh, I wanna thank you all very much for watching. Any comments, questions, concerns, and or criticisms, throw them down in the comment section below me. Otherwise, everybody have a great day.